Mr. Wilkinson, so you have a question, why won't my sketch uh, define? So what we're dealing with here is a revolve feature for the benefit of you and other people who might be looking at this. So we go to edit sketch, let's take a look at this. You see the preview in yellow and um, yeah, you have a lot of blue lines here. Uh, it, it, it needs some work in regard to defining this. You also have something that's extra complex in here too and that's that spline. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to try to define this um, uh, without the spline, we'll regard the spline later because it takes a lot, of, a lot more effort to do, to define that spline than it does just regular sketch elements like arcs and lines. So let's do this. This 10-inch uh, diameter dimension refers to the diameter of the of the wheel itself. So instead of it being to this point down here, it really needs to be to that point up here. So let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete that dimension. And I'm going to try to pull some of this stuff down. First of all, we're going to get rid of that point because we don't really need that point. And then we're going to pull this down a little bit so we can get close to that 10 uh, inch dimension. And it kind of dorks things out a little bit, but we can probably fix that. Um, let's do this. Let's take these two elements here and make that tangent to each other. That'll help fix that a little bit better. Let's see if we can pull this down. And uh, yeah, that's kind of ugly trying to do that. So let's just do this uh, piece by time. What we're going to do is we're going to scrunch up the, the spline a little bit and then pull the other elements down with it. Yeah, it's okay if the spline gets a little bit dorked out like that too. We can always correct that later. So I'll pull that down, and then we'll pull this down a little bit. And you notice that the circle is not really, uh, or this arc is not really fully defined there either. It's not really in the middle. So let's do this. Uh, let's make sure that uh, the midpoint of that arc is going to be in that line. It may already be so because of uh, maybe a, a relationship up there with the center of that arc. But let's also take this point and this point and make those horizontal to each other. Oh, may not like that. So let's go ahead and uh, take that um, intersection. Okay. What I did is I took out that uh, coincident relationship because that was probably redundant with something else. And of course, you make these two points horizontal to each other. That too will define that in the middle. So even though they may not necessarily conflict right away, if it's uh, redundant to another uh, relationship, it may not let you do that. So let's do this. Let's go click on the, on the arc itself. I remember we've done this before when we do arcs. You want to click on the arc itself and not the center of the arc or maybe some other element. Because it's uh, the arc itself, um, you know, the diameter of the arc defining uh, the center of that tire is uh, the dimension we really want. So let's put in 10 inches. And let's see if we can fix the rest of this. So let's take our spline and move that down just a little bit more. And do that piece by piece so we don't get it all dorked out like it was. And we might consider um, moving that down too a little bit if you really want to keep that spline. I would recommend uh, arcs at this point, but uh, that's okay. So one thing you might try, and let's uh, kind of polish the rest of this up here too. I don't know if you want to have that tangent down here, but if you do, um, anticipating you do. If not, you'll have to define it another way. Let's go ahead and make that tangent. Pull our spline down just a little bit more. And now we can be begin to define it. If it's not too complex, and it might be complex here, if it's not too complex, you might consider uh, doing uh, fully defined sketches. But I noticed a couple blue points out here. I'm not certain what they refer to, so I'm going to go ahead and delete those. That might be a result of uh, you know maybe doing some mirroring or some other elements in here. But um, yeah, let's, let's try that. Let's uh, right click on a fully defined sketch. And let's click the default values. And it's going to make some calculations. It's uh, primarily going to be working on that spline. And uh, boy, this always doesn't always work out. So let's do this manually. It's probably a pretty good uh, thing to do. It's a, it's a nice uh, learning um, opportunity here. So the thing with the spline, and it looks like this too probably needs to be defined a little bit better. So yeah, we have a couple arcs in here. This may not be the shape that we really want, but we also need to define these arcs uh, with a certain value. So we're going to make that 2 inches. We're just going to take whatever value is there, and that already is a 2 inches, so I think we're in pretty good shape. You want to take the value that you have there and then um, you'll round it up or round it down to somewhere close, if that's uh, close to the shape you want to do. So with the spline, we need to start defining where these points are going to be. So maybe 0.5 for that spline point. And uh, let's click on that point itself. And what that does is it gives you the ability to control 0.625. We'll do it in uh, fractional inch units. 
what that does is it gives you the ability to control this handle. So if you click on this point up here, it kind of gives you a handle up here. You can play with that handle. It gives you the ability to influence. Oh. It gives you the ability to influence uh, the, the impact of that uh, point on its neighboring points. So, you know, spines are kind of tricky. But uh, what we want to do is we want to fully define these, uh, these handles here. A couple things you can do is you can go to the point itself and make a reference to like maybe some nearby geometry. We'll make that 0.5 inches. And then you can click on the endpoints of these and it tells you what the length of that line is going to be. So we're going to make that one inch. Actually, let's make that less, a lot less, maybe half an inch. So its impact on its neighbors is going to be less. And then with this one, you still have the ability to define an angle. So let's go to uh, Smart Dimension. Let's go to that point here and maybe that line will define an angle. That's going to be maybe 13 degrees. We're just going to do some rounding. So you notice that that uh, line, that handle here, as they call it, turns completely black. So this one, let's do the same thing. Let's uh, put an angle here on that one, maybe 10 degrees. Let's put a length by clicking on that endpoint. Let's make that maybe one inch. And uh, we have a couple additional things we need to, to define here. It looks like we have another arc here. Uh, we have... Uh, you know, the endpoint of that um, uh, of that uh, handle here. So let's see what we need to do here. We probably need to define maybe a distance here. So let's click on that point and this just happens to be the convenient. Okay, that's already defined that way. So maybe uh, a distance down here. Now you have a lot of stuff going on here. What I would recommend uh, when you're putting something like this together is to uh, do the simple stuff first, get it fully defined, and then add additional complexity to it as you, as you move along with it. So we still have a little bit of our flexibility here. Perhaps uh, we can nail down that point here to perhaps this line. Oops, that's already defined. So let's make a, a vertical relationship here. So maybe three inches. And now it looks like it's fully defined. It may not be the shape that you like, but uh, it does fully define the sketch. And you'll have to work it down a little bit. You'll notice in the Revolve 1 uh, feature, the sketch 1 is now fully defined. So, make sure you get these uh, dimensions, the critical dimensions. You need to do this for the tire too. The critical dimensions are the uh, center of the, uh, the circle that defines the section of the tire. The center of the center distance has got to be 10 uh, inches in diameter. And then all these other qualifications looks like you have that. It needs to be one inch here by a half an inch, if I, uh, if I remember correctly, not to three eighths of an inch. And that one inch diameter is good, and uh, this uh, five eighths of an inch uh, flat area over here, we're going to put in that uh, half inch hole. That should work there too. So, we will see you in class.